This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... 4.15. Yeah, that's it, 4.15. I remember exactly, because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I... I can't remember exactly. It all happened so fast. You say you took your son to the park at the school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I... I don't know. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Sean is a sensitive child. Our relationship has been a little difficult recently. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say. But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. at least three of the murders. Fuck, that bastard was a perfect fit. Shit! Ash? Okay. Sean Moss's mother is here. She'd like to speak with you. It was a few months back, the middle of the night. It was pouring down. Ethan came home completely drenched at about three. I asked him where he'd been. He, uh, he spoke about drowning the rain. Um, he didn't make any sense. There was something. Something in his eyes. Has he? Day, there was that announcement 
up about another victim of the origami killer. Police Lieutenant Carter Blake. This is Agent Norman Jaden of the FBI. According to our information, Ethan Mars is one of your patients. We'd like to ask you a few questions about him. I'm sorry, that's impossible. I beg your pardon? I'm bound by an oath of secrecy. Under no circumstances may I discuss my patients. My job is to find Sean Mars alive, and I don't give a damn about any bullshit oath. It's your duty to inform the police if you suspect one of your patients, Doctor. I'm sorry. I can't help you. And now I must ask you to leave. You need to cooperate. For your own sake. He's right. Legally, you gotta tell us what you know. Are you threatening me? I'm just giving you some free advice, Doc. I suggest you take it. Sean Mars' life may depend on what you know. Tell us what you know, Doctor. I am going to call the police and make a complaint about your behavior. Doctor, you are really pushing my buttons. The only thing I'm interested in is saving that kid's life. So, you're going to be a good boy and tell me what I want to know, or I am really going to lose you out of your my... Mind? Back off, Jaden. This guy knows something, and I'm not leaving here until he tells Let me what it is. Me. You... You have no right! <laughs> Come on, Doc. There's an easy way and a hard way. It's your fucking choice. You have no right to hit him. I'm saving a kid's life for Christ's sake. If you don't like it, leave. If you don't let go of this man immediately, I'll report you and you'll be off the case. What the hell's the matter with you, Norman? What, you getting cold feet? You don't want to save Sean Mars anymore? I want to save Sean Mars just as much as you do, but that doesn't give me all rights. So you're gonna stop this shit right now! Ethan Mars has had psychological problems since his first son died. He feels responsible for his death. A sort of morbid neurosis. He is haunted by visions of drowning bodies. A few weeks ago, after one of our usual sessions, I found this on the floor. He must have fallen out of his pocket. Ash, I want you to assign every available man to finding Ethan Mars. I want a man outside his place day and night. Notify all agencies to start looking for him. I want you to keep an eye on the train stations, the airports, the bus terminals. I want every cop in the city on his ass, so that if he moves, we know about it. Yes. Ethan Mars is the origami killer. That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal, is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What the fuck is that girl doing there? If Mars comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. On my go. Stay here, Jaden. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go.
You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. I'm here to judge you, Ethan. I'm trying to save the life of your son. We still have time, but it's running out. Help me, Ethan. Tell me what you know. Ethan, I'm trying to help you. I just want to understand what happened. But you have to trust me. Look at these, Ethan. Look at these. Eight photographs. Eight lives taken. Drowned in the goddamn rain. Recognize this one, huh? That's your son, Ethan. That's Sean. He is still alive. Talk to me, Ethan. Say something! God damn it, Ethan! Where is Sean? I kidnapped my son. But I can't remember what happened. I don't know where he is. But the only way to find him is to let me out of here. I'm the only person who can save him. It just doesn't add up, Ethan. Stop with this pathetic nonsense and tell me the fucking truth! I love my son. I love my son. If you keep me here, Sean is going to die. Time's running out, Ethan. And frankly, I don't care why you did it. The only thing I want to know is where you've hidden Sean. I don't know. I would already have saved him if I knew where he was. Okay. This is your last chance, Ethan. And this time, I suggest you think carefully before you answer. Where is Sean? I told you, I don't know. Ah! Carter, stop. I'm gonna report you for this. Go ahead, get the hell out of here. I couldn't stand you from the very beginning, Norman. Now get the fuck out! Come on, asshole. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Come on, come on then, pussy. Let's see what you got. Games, asshole. Come on, let's play a little game. You're out of your mind, Blake. This is gonna. My son's gonna die. You gotta save him. Please, save my son. I beg you, you're his last chance. Save my son. A few more hours left to save Sean Mars. There has to be a goddamn clue somewhere. It's probably staring me in the face. This kid's gonna die, and I'm going around in circles! All packed up and ready to go? What are you talking about? The investigation's over. We know who did it. No longer need your services anymore, Norman. So you can ride your files all the way back to Washington. I'd be lying if I said I was going to miss you. The investigation isn't over. You have absolutely nothing on Mars. Mars is guilty. Case closed.
Anyway, it's no concern of yours now. You're off the case. So pack up and fuck off. Blake, you are an unbalanced, psychopathic asshole. I'll take that as a compliment. Honestly, I don't give a shit what you think. I found the origami killer. Everyone's happy. End of story. Have a nice trip back, Norman. There's only one cop in that geo-profiling zone. Gotcha. He owns a warehouse on the docks. If I'm wrong, Sean Mars is dead. The rainfall has reached critical levels. There's not much time left if I want to find the kid alive. The old docks. The perfect place for a killer. his life for his son. And what do I get? Nothing! Nobody! Oh. What real love if it isn't sacrifice? All the people love each other. They're just a pack of liars! You shouldn't have gotten mixed up in this. You, the 
discovered my little secret. Right, Sean? Yes. Yes, I think so. Where's Dad? I'll call the police. They'll come and get you, okay? <sighs> Agent Norman Jane, FBI. Tell Lieutenant Blake. I found Sean Mars. Send men and an ambulance immediately to 852 Theodore Roosevelt Road. Fast! successful resolution of this case was made possible only by the bravery and tenacity of Norman Jaden, an FBI profiler brought in to help local police. State-of-the-art technology and his own investigator's flair allowed him to track down the killer. Our main headline today, it is reported that the police have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. 
Scott Shelby, 48, is a former police lieutenant who claimed to be a private eye hired by the families of the killer's victims. Shelby was killed during a massive police operation, but further details have not yet been released to the public. In a related tragedy, it was learned that the investigation has cost the life of Madison Page, a young reporter covering the origami killer story.